Hi everyone and welcome to the video on bond polarity and electronegativity. To start we're going to talk about electronegativity. Now we did talk about this in chapter 7. Um, electronegativity is the ability of atoms in a molecule to attract electrons to themselves. So in order to discuss electronegativity the atom must be in a bond. So on the periodic table electronegativity generally increases as you go from left to right and from bottom to top. So fluorine has the highest electronegativity value. Right? So fluorine's electronegativity value is 4.0. Down in the left-hand corner, cesium has the lowest, looking at this periodic table, um, with an electronegativity value of 0.7. So as we look at electronegativity, it's important to remember that the larger the difference in electronegativity, um, the more polar the bond between them will be. So looking at types of covalent bonds. So we've talked about ionic and covalent bonding in the last video. Now I want to focus on the types of covalent bonds. So we can have nonpolar covalent bonds or we can have polar covalent bonds. A nonpolar covalent bond is a bond between atoms with equal or nearly equal electronegativities. So what this means is that the electrons are shared equally and neither atom has a partial positive or a partial negative charge. So really this means electrons for the most part are shared equally. Now looking at the electronegativity value, um, this is going to be 0 to 0.4. Okay, so again 0 to 0.4. That needs to be your difference in electronegativity value in order to be nonpolar covalent. So if you calculate electronegativity and the value is 0.1, that's nonpolar covalent. Um, the next type of bond is polar covalent. So polar covalent bond is a bond between atoms with different electronegativities. Um, so in order for it to be polar covalent, it should be from 0.5 all the way to 2, okay, or 2.0. So anything between 0.5 and 2, that's a polar covalent bond. Okay, so what this means, because there's this difference in electronegativity, is one of the atoms pulls electrons more than the other. So looking at the example down here, um, hydrogen, okay, this is less electro electronegative than fluorine. So fluorine is the most electronegative um, atom. Anything with fluorine, unless it's fluorine, um, is going to be polar. So fluorine is more electronegative. This wants to pull all of the electrons toward it, giving fluorine a partial negative charge and hydrogen this partial positive. And that's what this S looks like, right? Partial positive and partial negative. So that is a polar covalent bond. Another example is water, right? Oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen. Oxygen is going to pull its electrons um, toward it, making it partially negative, leaving hydrogen partially positive. So going along with polar covalent bonds, um, the electrons in the covalent bond aren't always shared equally like I discussed. Okay? Another um, picture down here is showing you how fluorine in HF pulls on the electrons more than hydrogen does, giving it that partial negative side. So Looking at some examples um, with bond polarity, HCl is polar okay, because this has a large difference in electronegativity. Chlorine is going to pull the electrons toward it, giving chlorine a partially negative charge and hydrogen a partial positive. So there are a few different ways you can represent this. You can use partial positive, partial negative, or you can also use this arrow at the bottom. Okay, this arrow shows that hydrogen is positive and your electrons are attracted toward chlorine. Okay, so chlorine has a greater share in the bonding electrons. Right? The electrons are more attracted toward chlorine than hydrogen, giving chlorine the slight negative charge and hydrogen the slightly positive charge. Okay, so like I mentioned before, the greater the difference in electronegativity, the more polar the bond. So if you're looking at which bond is more polar, just look at electronegativity differences, right? If you have a dif difference of 0.9 and 1.5, the difference of 1.5, that bond is going to be more polar. 
So when two atoms share electrons unequally, we have what is called a bond dipole. Okay, so a bond dipole is this partial negative, partial positive side of the bond. Um, we can actually calculate this in a quantitative matter using a dipole moment. So the dipole moment is represented by mu. Okay, this is the Greek letter mu. Um, and again, it's just a quantitative measure of the magnitude of a dipole. So the higher the dipole moment, the more polar the molecule. Um, and the way to calculate is using mu equals Q times R. So Q um, are the opposite charges. So maybe it's plus one and plus two. Q would be two. Um, R is the distance between um, the nuclei. And dipole moment is measured in Debye's, which is capital D. And you can actually see an example problem in the book. So here is the periodic table of electronegativities. Notice fluorine, most electronegative at 4.0, cesium down here, 0.7. So this will actually be very helpful as you're going through calculating electronegativity differences. So a way to figure out if something is polar, nonpolar, um, or ionic is by looking at this difference in electronegativity. To calculate the difference, right, delta means change in, so we want to find the difference in electronegativity. We need to take the absolute value of A minus B. Okay? The difference in electronegativity value always needs to be positive. That's why we're taking this um, absolute value. So you find the difference in electronegativity, and that's what we're going to use to determine if a bond is nonpolar, polar, or ionic. So here are sort of guidelines um, with looking at types of bonds. So 0 to 0.4 again is nonpolar. Um, what you could say here is 0 0.41 to 1.0 is polar. Uh, 1 to 2 is very polar and then anything greater than 2 is ionic. Now something to think about is there's another way to tell if it's ionic right look for a metal if there's a metal it's always going to be ionic even if your electronegativity difference is maybe 1.9 right if you have a metal it's going to be ionic um, so here's a checklist to go through when you're determining bond type first check for a metal um, if there's a metal it's ionic then if there is no metal find the difference in electronegativity values okay, take the absolute value always make your difference positive if it's 0.4 or less, it's nonpolar. If it's 0.5 or more, uh, it's polar, right? And greater than one, that's going to be very polar. Um, and so that's just kind of the way that you can go through this. Um, if you have to determine the polarity of a bond without being given the electronegativity values, um, something to help is any covalent bond that involves fluorine is polar. Okay, so if you have anything with fluorine, it's going to be a polar bond. Um, carbon and hydrogen, that's always nonpolar, right? And any diatomic molecule, whether it's um, H2, F2, I2, because those are equal, that's going to be nonpolar as well. So hopefully that will help you as you work through um, determining the bond type. Um, if you have any questions, please make sure that you ask in class. Um, otherwise, that is it for this video.